the uh, introduction video as this is the second of our textbook lectures. And here we're going to, our objective here is to describe the key functions of government and explain why they matter. We've uh, given you a brief introduction to the chapter here. And now we're going to look at specifically government. The institutions that make authoritative decisions for any given society are collectively known as government. In our own national government, these institutions are the Congress, the President, the courts, and federal administrative agencies called the bureaucracy. Thousands of state and local governments also make policies that influence our lives. There are roughly 500,000 elected officials in the United States. That means that policies that affect you are being made almost constantly. Because government shapes how we live, it is important to understand the process by which decisions are made, as well as what is actually decided. Two fundamental questions about governing will serve as themes throughout this book. One, how should we govern? Americans take great pride in calling their government democratic. This chapter examines the workings of democratic government. The chapters that follow will evaluate the way American government actually works compared to the standards of an ideal democracy. We will continually ask, who holds the power and who influences the policies adopted by government? Two, what should government do? The text explores the relationship between how American government works and what it does. In other words, does our government do what we want it to do? Debates over this question concerning the scope of government are among the most important in American political life today. Some people would like to see the government take on more responsibilities. Others believe it already takes on too much and that America needs to promote individual responsibility instead. While citizens often disagree about what their government should do for them, all governments have certain functions in common. National governments throughout the world perform the following functions. One, maintain a national defense. A government protects its national sovereignty, usually by maintaining armed forces. In the nuclear age, some governments pose, possess awesome power to make war through highly sophisticated weapons. The United States spends at least $275 billion a year on national defense. Two, provide public services. Governments in this country spend billions of dollars on schools, libraries, weather forecasting, halfway houses, and dozens of other public policies. Some of these services, like highways and public parks, can be shared by everyone. Other services, such as college education or medical care, can be restricted to individuals who meet certain criteria, but may be provided by private sectors as well. Government typically provide these services to make them accessible to people who may not be able to afford privately available services. Three, preserve order. Every government has some means of maintaining order. When people protest in large numbers, governments may resort to extreme measures to restore order. For example, the National Guard was called in to stop the looting and arson after rioting broke out in Los Angeles after the, after the 1992 Rodney King verdict. Four, socialize the young. Most modern governments pay for education and use it to instill national values among the young. School curricula typically offers a course on the philosophy and practice of the country's government. Rituals like the Daily Pledge of Allegiance seek to foster patriotism and love of country. 5. Collect taxes. Approximately one out of every three dollars earned by an American citizen was used to pay national, state, and local taxes, money that was used to pay for the public goods and services provided by the government. All these governmental tax tasks add up to weighty decisions that must be made by our political leaders. For example, how much should we spend on national defense as opposed to education? How high should taxes for Medicare and Social Security be? The way we answer such questions is through politics, and that is the subject of our next lecture.